Yu-Gi-Oh! card artwork can be unparalleled at times. There are so many art styles across over two decades of cards. However, when some cards are released internationally outside of Japan, Konami may make some changes. Certain elements of cards are censored if Konami feels like they would be too violent or risque for a worldwide audience. Sometimes they just add more clothes to monsters, other times things get repositioned, or the artwork gets completely overhauled and redone. In reality, almost all of these changes never had to be made since general audiences could handle it or just wouldn't care, but at the very least, it gives us something to compare and question. I want to find the weirdest changes made to Yu-Gi-Oh card artwork. I'll specifically be talking about the North American releases compared to the original Japanese cards, but most of the censored cards were seen in other international markets over the originals as well. And since I want to find the weirdest among a sea of censored cards, I'll be covering covering similar types of censorship as overall entries, instead of just individual cards for each entry, if applicable. Some censored cards are so unique that they deserve a solo entry. Finally, since this is such a dense topic, I have a whole bunch of co-hosts to join me. First off, Judgment Meter. That's me! Hey guys! Then, Corgian from the Corgian Twitch channel. That's me! I'm that Corgian. Next up, Sam from Dungeon Dive Bar. Hey there, folks. And professional skill drain fan Syzygy Solo. You may know me from nothing. If you know me, that's kind of scary. <laughs> now, let's judge the top 10 weirdest censored Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Number 10, Foolish Return. Coffins were something Yu-Gi-Oh never felt they had to censor internationally before. We had the Cheerful Coffin, Cursed Coffin, Coffin Cellar, even Trial of Nightmare. And don't think I didn't see that original name you had there, Trial. Nothing was really ever censored on on cards like these, never had a second thought about them. The most we had censored was the red being removed on the Trial of Nightmare coffin. Why did someone store all their tomato soup in there? But for some reason, Foolish Return had its coffin removed. This was in 2010, many years after most of those other coffin cards were released unaltered. The Japanese version depicts someone breaking out of their coffin since they're so determined to give flowers to their beloved that not even death or a wooden coffin can stop them. It's probably that wacky zombie from Foolish Burial Goods. However, Konami found something too grim in this image for international audiences and just removed the coffin from existence. They didn't even replace it with something different. Like, everything else is the same with the image, except the coffin is gone. So the dude is just smashing his hands through the floorboards to deliver these flowers, making this unintentionally more hilarious than it's meant to be. Like, was he just buried under a house somewhere in this canon? This is like a Looney Tunes gag. Did a house fall on him Wizard of Oz style? We can assume how he got into the coffin in the original card, but there's a variety of scenarios that would leave him under a house. This is so many different kinds of great. I think this is honestly my favorite censorship because it goes from being, oh, okay, that's he's returning from the dead. That makes sense. To he's returning from his basement garden to get you some lovely flowers he's picked. It's it's the Edgar Allan Poe part of the floor. It's Edgar Allan Poe coming back to say, hey, I have some flowers. Knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> the floor. Uh. Number nine, dramatic rescue and tragedy. The traps with guillotines on them. No guillotine is safe when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! International releases. There have been two scenarios where a guillotine is center stage on a card. Dramatic rescue and tragedy of the guillotine, just called tragedy in the English releases. Dramatic rescue. Rescue has more standard censorship where it still conveys the card's original intent. It's a woman dramatically being rescued as advertised. They just redraw her to be tied to a tree rather than being removed from a guillotine. Well, I mean, at least they kept the hand and the lady, but she lost her undershirt and now her arm is stuck in a guillotine. Oh, and the guards are not there. Because who needs guards when your arm is stuck in a guillotine? Also a different woman because her hairs can face are completely different. The first card looks like Danganronpa, the second second one looks like Dragon Ball. Save Bulma. I think it'd be really funny if you activated and resolved this card and then immediately played Left Arm Offering. Like, yeah, I need to save you from this card so we can cut it off to add, I don't know, Spirit Message E. What I also like is that this guillotine is just beautiful headhunter's sword and just stuck it on a chain. Can I blow your guys' mind real quick with her anatomy as well? She doesn't have a forearm. She's got a hand, a shoulder, and there's nothing in between. 
between. Quick question. Where are these people going? What's the infinite void behind them? It's the dark world. Ah, uh, yes. My favorite way of getting to the dark world. Standing on solid ground and just kind of like going horizontally until you fall in. It happened to Gaga Gigo. Also, these guards are terrible. There is two of them and they're both facing the same direction. So you can grab her. The other card, Tragedy of the Guillotine, was completely redrawn. Since that card's name actually focuses around a guillotine, they just kept the tragedy part of it and gave someone freer reign on drawing something that was a quote-unquote tragedy. They're both pretty creepy. I mean, one is like very clear, like, yep, your head's gonna get chopped off. The other one's like, ooh, gonna stalk you. And then what's gonna happen? The censored card gave us such a monstrosity with the art style that it's much more memorable. It kind of looks like a Goosebumps book cover. Freddy Krueger, that's who he looks like. That's that's the two guys from Fiend Comedian. They're trying to draw someone in for a trap. They're gonna cause a tragedy right there. And the tragedy is you're playing Fiend Comedian. They're gonna tell a bad joke. Some people have said the guy is the Dark King of the Abyss based on the nails, which would then open up a whole new can of worms since you're messing with an ongoing storyline that's unrelated. Where does this woman come into play? Is she related to Hot Des? I'm confused. Also, just in general, I think the guillotine is more comforting than whatever this is. I've never really looked at this card in a lot of detail before because, again, I don't play bad cards. But I'm just baffled by how inhumane the human looks. Dark King of the Abyss is drawn more human-like with his appearance than this woman who I'm still convinced is actually the golem that's being made by the witchcrafters. Which hand? Th these aren't hands. Like, look at her wrist on her right hand. That's not a how wrists work. I do like that the tragedy isn't really implied. Like in the other one, yeah, it's a guillotine, obviously. Someone's getting beheaded. This one, this is a to your interpretation is the tragedy the woman is the tragedy the dude are you getting beat up is the tragedy the fact that you're playing this card in your deck the tragedy is just the fact the moon is red and you hate the color red no that's regular in Yu-Gi-Oh. yeah the moon's always red look at vampire baby number eight the barrel dragons and all other gun cards gun censorship in Yu-Gi-Oh is interesting since sometimes they come up with cool alternatives and other times not so much my favorite is science soldier where he has some heavy art artillery that was turned into this sound wave gun. For a monster that is supposed to have cool scientific weapons, I like the idea of him using a sci-fi megaphone weapon over something realistic. Another interesting gun censorship was in Barrel Behind the Door. The original depicts an archaeologist exploring some ruins, but it appears someone has a trap to shoot him as soon as he enters a room. The censored version turns the gun into some sort of ancient Egyptian gun. I don't even know what this is supposed to to be, but it's so elaborate that I kind of love it. They went all out in decorating every aspect of this gun to make it not a gun, and turn it into like a golden snake thing of doom. I kind of want to use that in a video game. That was more fun! Which one am I going to use? I'm going to use the gold one with the snake. <laughs> Credit where credit's due to Konami. If I was in their stead and they were like, hey, we got to change this card, it's got a gun on it, I would just go on full gusto and just put a barrel there, and just make <laughs> the card more confusing than it already is. Like, why are you scared of this barrel? literal barrel behind the door. <laughs> I mean, would it not be what the card describes? It would be. And that's why Konami won't accept my job applications. Of course, for the most gun edits, you have to go to the gun archetype itself, the Barrel Dragons. Yeah! Barrel Dragon! Barrel Dragon. Barrel Dragon is in my favorite scene of the manga, which is, it's Joey versus Bandit Keith. And in the manga, Bandit Keith has a foul mouth, and he just plays Barrel Dragon, and Joey's got a thousand dragon out, and he goes, you're done! Dumb drag is no match for my dragon made of f***ing guns. Even in Yu-Gi-Oh! R, he's cursing. He is so not YouTube friendly. But I do like the laser nerf gun that Barrel Dragon has now instead of, you know, the revolvers Revolver Dragon had. He got the works. New colors, designs on the side showing the laser's energy, and an overall shine. I like the extra brightness on that card, but I still like the novelty of the original where I could just describe it as a robot dragon made of guns. Twin Barrel Dragon seemed to escape a bit of censorship where they changed absolutely nothing about his gun head design, though they still added some lights inside the barrel to make it look like he was charging his laser. And we can also add on to 
that Barrel Dragon's upgrade into Desperado Barrel Dragon, where rather than make those look like laser beams, they just irradiated him. Because he still got all of his metal, like, wrought iron, like, war spikes and stuff, but then they just said, what if we gave him fake lasers and irradiated the revolver barrels? It reminds me of how in the Zatch Bell dub, they just added a radiation green glow to the otherwise normal guns for the most low effort censorship. I mean, this reminds me of the time I would hang out in the backyard of my friend's house. We'd both get the water guns, but instead of filling mine with uh, water, I'd fill it with toxic waste, and uh, I'd go to town. Needless to say, my friends kind of didn't make it past the fourth grade. Toon Barrel Dragon did not get the same censorship. It's both toy guns, which is funny because that's what happened to Barrel Dragon was he got these toy laser beam looking guns. But the mystic runes on Toon Barrel Dragon, as an aside, were removed... <laughs> because they didn't want it to look like the barrels of a toy gun. I love Yu-Gi-Oh. I do like that how the tune aesthetic made it so that they didn't have to censor the actual guns because it's a pea shooter. It's not, you know, a gun. The worst thing yeah. you do with pea shooters are uh, kill someone who has a pea allergy. Wait. Number seven, Parasite Parasite and Fiend Comedian. There are two main reasons I'm pairing these cards together in a single entry. First, they were both originally grotesque body horror cards that Konami felt like they had to tone down greatly when released internationally, so they follow a similar theme that was censored. And second, I covered both of them individually on my creepiest classic Yu-Gi-Oh cards list and didn't want to spend another two separate entries on them in a separate video, but they were still notable censorships and deserved a mention on this list, so a tie it is. They each got different treatment in how they were censored. Parasite Parasite went the foolish return route, and Konami just removed what they considered problematic and left everything else. It was pretty gruesome to have this parasite burrowing through this guy's face, so they just removed the guy. As I said in the creepy video, this guy was not having a good day. I don't think he likes that. The parasite seems pretty chill about it, just poking his head out to say hello. The worst part is the tentacle coming out of the guy's mouth. In this scenario, I would just want to bite down, but I know if I do, I'm going to get a gush of parasite juices. It's, mm, it's one of those big six foot long gummy worms that you could buy. I think the worst part about that is the fact that because of how we've seen Parasite Parasite work in the anime, that tentacle is actually his tongue. Oh, it's creepy. I don't like it because I don't like bugs. At least when they left the Parasite alone on the censored card, they gave it a shiny coloration and it has rush lines behind it as if it's coming to get you quickly, advertising that this Parasite may not be your ordinary Yu-Gi-Oh monster. As for Fiend Comedian, it was completely redrawn. They don't look anything like one another, but they're both stellar pieces of art. The original was sick, both in terms of the awesome definition and the gross one. So many things were disturbing. The bulging veins, the eyeball tongue, the guys tearing their faces off. Give it a good look and you'll see. Oh look, they're friends. They're having a good time. Meanwhile, personally, this is another one of those cases where I way prefer the censored version. I I'm someone who loves body horror. I love the work of Junji Ito, but stylistically, this censored art is just so much more interesting. It's way better balanced. The colors are way more interesting. I, I much prefer the international release than the original in Japanese. I want to point out something else fascinating about this artwork. It's parodying Ultimate Offerings TCG artwork. A fat green goblin and a skeletal demon looking red shooting out of his head. They feel like a cross between the mask and Boba Bo 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 Bo. The original guys are comedians that find gore and mutilation funny, while the redrawn guys look like they'll perform clown tricks that end with you signing a deal with the devil. I don't trust that purple guy's facial expression. It's like New 52 Joker versus Silver Age Joker, or maybe DCAU Joker to give him a bit more credit. Actually, so I found the comedy in the first card. It took me a little while. There was a rubber duck in that man's head. Yes. This redeems the yes. entire card. Like, I don't know what, what they're actually doing. Like, that guy's like, haha, look at me. I can stress my face while looking a sword but the star of the show man no the rubber duck is the mastermind ah, I, I see like what's his name mr mind from dc i usually don't remember stuff but the ducky i remember number six acts of despair censored acts of despair never looked weird to me until i saw the uncensored version the head of the axe was actually a different type of head a demon head of sorts now i understand
understand why it was always so veiny. I just assumed inanimate things could have a circulatory system in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe. But now that I know the truth, the censored version did have a weird looking texture without the head. I like how the axe blade has veins too. Your axe blades don't have veins? No, my swords do. Ah, oh, okay, yes. Uh, we must be from different parts of the United States. This is how I used to draw trees growing up. I would start with a nice veiny thick trunk and then I would go for this nice wrinkled green head and that was the leaves and that's all you needed. I'm not sure if the head is supposed to be threatening or just vibing, but either way, I love it. I could understand the censorship if that was like a bloody decapitated head attached to the axe, but it's just an arch fiend who's living out their days as an axe and I'm happy for them. The first card is some high goblin responding to the question, hey, can I ask you a question? He's like, yeah, man, I'm all ear. Go back to the original one. Ma! What? The giving attack points! What? The giving attack points! I remember attack points. I always hated the stuff! Equip the axe, Kronk! Wrong axe! He looks like if I hold him, he's gonna whisper, Hey, 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 hey guys, Axe of the Spare here. You guys wanna guy some coconuts? <sighs> I love it and hate it at the same time. <laughs> hmm. You wanna go crack open a coconut? Number five, the Dark Magician Girl and many other cards. The Dark Magician Girl has had so many re-releases that all suffer from the same censorship that she's a good single monster representation of the most common types of censorship in Yu-Gi-Oh! Clothing that is considered too revealing and any religious references. Yeah, look at all this censorship for her. This is honestly insane to me. The fact that they kept doing it over and over and they never backed down on it. Wait, the manga was censored too? It was actually because four kids wanted consistency and they strong-armed it in. They censored her for dungeon dice monsters? I am so impressed by this, like, four polygon dark magician girl losing one of her polygons being her breasts. Don't forget you have all those fruit pie flavored dark magician girls that followed the dark magician girl's lead when it came to censorship. My favorite is chocolate magician girl because I think she wound up for the better in the English card art. I like it a lot more. She did lose her garters. That's true. She can barely hold up her boots anymore. Well, it's actually what I find interesting about this artwork, the garters actually look like they were drawn on, like how other yeah. things usually look like that. The garters look out of place in this, which is yep. so weird. The next big archetype that was hit with the censorship stick all around were the Harpy Ladies. For nearly every early Harpy Lady, they took the skin skimpy outfits and recolored all the skin to just make the outfit a whole jumpsuit. Some monsters like Harpy Queen also got bust reduction, and ones like Harpy Harpist didn't get the full jumpsuit treatment and actually had scandalous shoulders exposed. Any Harpy ladies with cyber armor also lost their nipple spikes. She has hips for days! Who cares about those boobs? Look at those hips! Fortune ladies are an example of another archetype that experienced similar censorship. The main oddball was Fortune Lady Earth since her censored color scheme made it look like she was wearing a gaudy purple jacket under her outfit. One clothing censorship they didn't do too often was on Gemini Elf and Thunder Nyan Nyan, where they have a fur lining on the dress that cuts off right below their armpits on the original, but when they extended it to be a full body dress on the censored version, they didn't move that fur lining, so their outfits just have a random patch of fur in the middle now. She is both a cat and an Urusei Yatsura and a drummer. But it's not just the ladies who have been censored. The Tyrant series of trap cards featured a tyrant who walked around in his boxers, and Konami slapped a shirt on him since we could not handle his partial nudity. Also, his cross necklace was removed, so he's like Dark Magician Girl in a sense, where he had both his clothes and religious imagery censored. Speaking of which, let's look at Avatar of the Pot. G-string, G-string, G-string. This is the ideal male body right here. Uh, uh... 
Uh-oh. He has a body. I cannot stop staring at his crotch. I can imagine that picture being in an Ojama's bedroom and him looking at it like, yeah, that's what I aspire to be. What I find really fascinating about the censorship is I think this is one of the few cases where they gave more. Normally they try to do like breast reduction or things like that. No, they gave him more butt. If you look at the difference between these two, there is slightly more butt in the censored version of the art compared to the not censored. You can just put lumps wherever you want and people will be like, oh, that, that's a place. I remember muscles being there. I activate the spell card pot of greed. It allows me to draw two pecs on the body wherever I want to. Nope, nope. You have avatar of the pot. It becomes three. <gasps> You're right. Stupid sexy pot of greed. Number four, double trap hole. Double trap hole is weird because it's inconsistent with Konami's other censorship. The original has one of the normal trap hole goblins running excitedly toward an attractive doll of a lady goblin as the green trap hole goblin whines that he is not going to get there first since he fell into one of the double trap holes. He's saying, don't do it. It's a trap. It's a trap. In the censored version, she's replaced with a slab of cartoon meat. Apparently, they favor gluttony over lust here. Nothing about the doll was overtly sexual like some of the monsters in the previous entry, so I'm not sure why they did this. The original was a funny Looney Tunes-esque gag, intentionally this time, where the two goblins see a clearly fake lady and then get bonked for it by falling in the holes. The meat gag is okay, but knowing the original, it's a shame they changed it. These guys can fall into acid, giant spider pits in the void, but not into this trap. I like my goblins like I like my meat, sending me to my inevitable demise. The biggest reason I find this weird, though, is because a similar doll appears on Treacherous Trap Hole, completely normal and unedited. I don't know if this is a follow-up to Double Trap Hole or an alternate scenario with the goblins, but why is this doll okay when the other one isn't? Is it the tag in the mouth that makes it better? Is it good that I know it's fake? Yeah, no, she's completely fine when she's hanging from a rope. But when she's under a basket, unacceptable. This is a real go-figure scenario. In the end, Treacherous Trap Hole got the last laugh since it's both uncensored and a better trap hole. Number three, the token goblins and any other references to alcohol. I'm not surprised that alcohol was taken out of the international releases, but we saw the highs and lows of censorship creativity with it. The most basic edits were getting rid of any red on monsters' faces that indicates inebriation. But in some of the more elaborate cards, the token goblins, we don't see the best censorships. On Token Sunday, they're all enjoying some mugs of unspecified beverage. Konami removed the mugs in the international releases because these guys are not allowed to have a good time. While it's assumed that it's beer or something alcoholic, you could have just said it isn't. Maybe they're drinking goblin ale, which sounds alcoholic, but it's just juice. However, this goes beyond the alcohol since Konami changed some of the food for some reason, making the scapegoat tokens that they eat into Fabergé eggs of scapegoat tokens because uh, eating scapegoats is wrong now. I find it so weird that they censored the scapegoats that they're eating, but the ones on the plate are fine. So I also want to point out they're not just eating sheep tokens. If you look very closely in the bottom left of the bag, there's shining friendship right there. They killed it and removed the halo. Oh no. Is that a Karibo? No, no, that's Wretched Ghost of the Attic. They're also eating Marshmallow Cube. Okay, that one had to come. Do you think when you eat the sheep tokens, do you like have to chew them or do they just go thump? Oh, they collapse like a marshmallow. Absolutely. They have no nutritional value. They've got zero defense points and everyone knows that defense points are equal to your amount of fiber. Ah. Uh. I do want to shove my mouth with food. Though there is one alcohol censorship that was very creative, being number 41, Baguska the Terribly Tired Tapier. He's slumby. He's just like, uh, booze? No, pillow. Yes. I don't feel like you actually lose anything from it. Like, the None. first one, he's obviously hungover and drunk. That's fine. But the other one, he's just hes just a tired baby. I mean, I would too if I was made by two level four monsters, put in defense position, and negated all effects on the field. His Japanese name translates to Mud Sleeping Demon Beast Baguska. So the edit doesn't even betray his original intent. 
just instead of being tired because he was up all night drinking, he simply tuckered himself out and was prepared by bringing pillows. My favorite part about him is this is just him throughout the day. He starts his day with drinking, then he ends his day with napping. Good life. Obviously, it's better if they don't have to censor anything, but if they do, at least have some fun with it. Number two, last day of which. This one probably has the grimmest change when you go from censored to uncensored. You have this goofy cartoon witch being prohibited from entering somewhere, and then bam, murder on the uncensored. I think the Romans are doing something bad again. The first card is simultaneously based on the Salem witch trials, and for whatever reason, the Romans? So at best, this was not the last day of the witch, but rather somewhere in the middle, and at worst, this was the first day of witch. This scene was so grim, Konami threw it all out and redesigned it. But whoever did the censored artwork had a much more innocent view of witches. They went with the Wizard of Oz style witch over the Crucible style witch. Toho looks like she has a secret to tell. Or not to tell. <laughs> the censored version sticks out like a sore thumb even more considering the series of cards it belongs to. Last day of witch, which destroys all spellcasters on the field, was a part of a series of spell cards that destroys a regular type of monster, like insect, rock, or fish. The rest of this series of spells has a specific dark aesthetic. Exile of the Wicked, Warrior Elimination, Acid Rain, they all have this grim, shadowy picture that makes me feel no hope for what's about to be destroyed, just like the original Last Day of Witch. The redesign doesn't even try to follow that aesthetic. It looks more like it belongs with the ghost trick archetype. If this didn't have the giant swirling photoshop background i could totally see this being outside of like a target like no smoking no skateboarding no witches none last day of it oh it's absolutely a halloween sign you pick up like in the seasonal section the discount seasonal section it's at party city only Let's collect some honorable mentions. Ultimate Offering. In Japanese, it's a guy offering his blood in some demonic ritual. The international version is a goblin, I guess squirting out blood that's creating a demon with horns, but the goblin looks happy about the situation, so this offering does not feel as ultimate as the original. Actually, no, that's just hyper-realistic scapegoats. And this is one of the goblins that ate way too many of them. I want to slurp that up, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it looks like fruit punch i want to drink him <laughs> the creature popping out of the fat goblin's head bears a marked similarity to summon skull's original artwork he is coming out of the skull and he is being summoned no attention the original shows a giant goblin calligrapher exploding in the distance the censored shows that he's team rocket blasting off again so now it's okay that he dies what cancel why did they remove shocked ojama yellow on the censored version We've seen both a lot of skeletons and Ojama yellow abuse on other Yu-Gi-Oh cards that did not have to be censored, so why this one? Can we address the Ojama in the room and how Ojama yellow has eye sockets in his skull, but still has eye stalks? You don't have those? Wait. This is one of the most literal pieces of card art I have ever seen, and it just reminds me of how boring Yu-Gi-Oh could have been with its art, but Takahashi drew it, and then it didn't have this level of boringness. Spicy Spy. This one is like a puzzle to find all the changes. The Cigar and Lady in Red are only the start of the dozen or so minor edits that this card received in the West. It's called I Spy See I Spy for a reason. I think my favorite thing is the fact that in the background, a dude being in love has been censored. No more love for him. He has been met with reality. I like that she has Muyan Curry. This dude's afraid of Muyan Curry. I am. Artifact. Scythe. Hey man, can you move your leg over a bit? Oh, sorry, sure. No, here he's in timeout. Yeah, he's in timeout. He's been put in the corner for having big scythe. He's not getting rid of it. And taunt. What's wrong with these guys? I guess the original guys were too scary, so Konami replaced them with goofier looking demons. I want to grab the eclair that's on the buff guy's head and just slurp it. Oh god, you're right! <laughs> 
For number one, we chose a card that was seemingly changed for no reason. Usually, we can at least speculate why a card was censored, but honestly, this one just felt like someone did not like the original design. Number one, Mystic Tomato. The Japanese version looks like a tomato as advertised, based on its shape, coloration, and texture, but the face is less mystic and more jack-o'-lantern. Then you show me the international version, and I think, now that's a tomato. It's so funny because if you showed me at any point in my life, one of these is censored. I would say, oh, obviously the creepy one was censored for the more cartoony looking jack-o'-lantern. But no, we're not allowed to reference our own Halloween here in the West. I don't think that they were particularly trying to censor anything. I can't explain reasons for changes outside of that Konami simply wanted a more cartoonish looking tomato. This was just baffling to me since I never saw a card get a redesign internationally just to fit an aesthetic. There's no violence, religion, or sexuality with the tomato, so was someone just afraid that the original tomato would get called out for resembling a pumpkin when coming to the west? Maybe its pumpkin traits were the reason it was considered mystic compared to your standard tomato. I don't know if I would call it mystic. Maybe, uh, threatening? Its Japanese name actually translates to Killer Tomato, so maybe jack-o'-lantern faces are just indicative of murder in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe. That being said, the international version still looks more murderous than the original. He's got sharp teeth and can't keep his tongue to himself. Also, his eyes and human nose are unsettling. While the Japanese version is still murderous, he's just charging at me at an angle. It's a little threatening, I guess. I I just want to crack his entire body open on the Japanese artwork. I don't know what it is, but the fact that the gap is already there, I kind of just want to like and break him in half. I want to take him and slice him up and put him on my hungry burger to eat with my ghost beef. Mmm, ghost beef. Why is TCG Mystic Tomato so veiny? What is he work? Is he even working out? That's a throbbing tomato. There's just a weird uncanniness that I get with the international version. So while the change may have been arbitrary, I do like the one that we got in the West. With its design, homicidal nature, and lack of motivation for a change, Mystic Tomato is the king of the weirdest censored Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Now, what did you think? Did you like all the cards that we discussed? Which versions were your favorite of each, censored or uncensored? And which uncensored art remains lost on this list? What did we maybe forget? Let us know in the comments. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and we will see you in the next video.